Once again, very grateful to God uh, that we get to share this moment with each one of, of you and believe that the grace of God is available uh, for us this Sunday. I have a Christmas message that I'd like to share with you and I want to do it uh, quite uh, quickly so that as we promise, we finish service uh, on time. Father, thank you that tonight or this day, a special day where we remember your birth, you will bless us with a word that in this moment, O oh God, you get to manifest your grace and glory. We are praying in the name of Jesus that your spirit shall move and flow in our midst and let your power be manifested as we hear your word in Jesus' name and everybody says, Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Look at your neighbor and say, The gifts. I'm reading from the book of first, uh, Luke chapter 1, first chapter of Luke. The Bible says uh, from verse 28, or 26 rather, the Bible said, now in the sixth month the angel was sent to God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. And he will be great, will be called the son of the highest. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no hand. Then Mary said to the angel, how can this be? I do not know a man. And the angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the highest will overshadow you. And therefore... Also, that the Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. John chapter 3 verses 16. The Bible reads, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have everlasting love. For God so loved the world that He gave gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life this is the word of god this sunday as i said that i'm talking on a subject entitled the gifts the gifts a few years ago i was able to share with the church on a message title uh unwrap the gifts unwrap the gift was a title of my message and uh, i was saying a few things right there that i would like to say it again this morning it is that every gift as a giver there will never be a gift without a giver a gift as a giver and it is the heart of the giver that makes a gift exceptional and God being the giver of the gifts called Jesus, his heart for us is that which makes that gift even more exceptional. Sometimes it is not about the gift, it is about the thoughts that the giver had in mind when he was extending that gift to you. Jesus is God's gift to the world. 
and a son has been given unto us being a giver is very exceptional and that giver is loving that giver is kind that giver is tender-hearted that giver is strong and mighty that giver is strong in our weakness that giver is a forgiver of our sin that giver is a is a compassionate one that giver is the merciful at every time of our weaknesses and God is the one that gives without holding back even if it is the last thing he got to give he will rather give it to you rather than not giving to anybody else why because every gift has a message for which God entitles it for when God gave us Jesus he didn't just give us Jesus because we deserve Jesus he gave us Jesus because it is Jesus we needed Oh, you're not hearing me. He did not give us Jesus because it is Jesus we wanted. He gave us Jesus because it is Jesus we needed. You know that sometimes God will not give you what you want, but gives you what you need. Oh, you're not here this morning. I said, God will not give you sometimes what you want and to give you what you need. There are times you will pray to God for God to open the windows of heaven and say, God, will you give me a job? God, will you give me this? God, will you give me that? But at the end of the day, it is not what you need that God will give you. It is not what you want that God will give you. It is rather what you need that God is going to give you. So what makes this gift exceptional is when we read in the book of uh, uh, so John chapter 3 verse 16 is that it began with the story of love for God so loved the world yeah, I want to tell you this Sunday morning that if ever a time it will happen to you that you don't feel loved by those who are around you you don't feel loved by the families around you you don't feel loved by your bosses you don't feel loved by your environment you always have to remember that even in your most adequate moment where you feel lonely God is always there there for you and he loves you unconditionally and the love of God is so special to us because it is that love that moved him to action and caused him to release a gift we did not deserve a gift we did not ask for a gift that was worth thing more than we could afford there's not a thing in a million years that you can do to deserve the gift that God gave us even if you had to give God all the salary of the world it will never equal to the size of what Jesus was able to do. Receiving a gift is not having it in your hand, but is having to unwrap it, having to open it up. I was talking this few days with a friend of mine who was also speaking on the same message, and he titled his message as well, The Gift. And one thing is said that we often receive and expect gifts when it's our birthdays but jesus is the only one who brings gifts through his birth when it's your birthday and i and i really love gifts and i'm just being honest i really love gifts but when jesus came he was the one that was being the gifts have you ever lived to a moment where you are looking for something and all of a sudden instead of people bringing you gift, yourself becomes a gift to a situation. Jesus is a gift of healing to your sickness. Jesus is a gift of deliverance to your brokenness. Jesus is a gift of wealth to your poverty. Jesus is the gift of life to your dying world. Jesus is the gift of hope to a hopeless situation. Jesus is a gift of blessing to a world that is broken. And that is the reason why Jesus, when we look at him, he was born a savior. Because the first gift he came to bring was the gift of salvation. And that's what the angels told shepherd and said to Joseph and Mary that his name shall be Jesus because he shall save his people from their sins. The second thing that Jesus does or the gift of Jesus does in our life, it is the gift of access. When men sinned in the book of Genesis chapter 3 verse 24, the Bible said that God kicked them out of the garden of Eden. And as God kicked them out of the garden of Eden, he placed an angel with a sword in his hand so that no man can ever come back. 
But do you know what happened when Jesus was born? It is that the same thing that was closed to us became now open because Jesus is a gift of access. That's the reason why in the book of John chapter 14 verse 4, uh, verse 5 uh, and verse 6, Jesus says, I am the way. And no one goes through the Father except through me. Because what you could not be able to access without God, you are now able to access it through Jesus. This Sunday morning, I want to remind you that when you have Jesus, you have access to God. Wherever you can be, whether you are cell or whether you are in a cell, whether you are broken, whether you are wounded, you must always remember of the fact that Jesus is a gift of access to your life. He is the way. Do you want a way to uh, your future? He is the way to your future do you want a way to your for blessing he is the way to your blessing there is nothing you can ever achieve in life without the involvement of jesus because he's a gift of access that's what the day he died the bible says the veil was torn to represent that what you could not enter in now through my death and through my birth you now have the ability to access i want to tell somebody in this christmas you are reminded that the door are open you are reminded that the gates are open if there's anything you could have done in this world that blocked your access to your future that block access to whatsoever that god desired for your life this sunday morning i want you to remind the devil and all his flocks that i am going to get what god said because the birth of jesus came to give me the gift of access what does it mean a gift it is something you don't pay for there is nobody that will go pay for his own gift because if you can afford your own gift it is not a gift it has to be somebody thinking of you and say what can i do for this person to bring joy to their heart and the first thing that god had to do is to make sure that we were saved and after we are saved he began to open the door and open the access to the things that we could not get access says i came to tell somebody no angel shall stop you from entering your promised land there shall be no principalities that I will forbid you from getting where you need to be because when you are coming you are coming with higher authority and that higher authority his name is jesus i said his name is jesus when you got jesus your future is certain when you got jesus the way to your future is open when you got jesus you might be broken down but nobody will close they are those before you because you got the one that has the doors hallelujah that's the reason why even when Shadrach Meshach and Abednego were thrown in the fire because Jesus is the door because Jesus is a, is a gift of access he found himself in the fire and they say that the fourth one looks like the face of the son of God I came to tell you in your trouble there is access in your pain there is access there's never going to be a place where the devil can take you and where God will not find you through the access he has given to his only begotten son tell your neighbor say it doesn't matter who has locked you out you got the keys when you have Jesus oh glory to God that's why that friend of mine said his name is Emmanuel, God with us, always with us. The Magi were looking for the born king. He was not going to be a king to be. He was born a king. He was not going to inherit a throne. He came with his throne. The Bible says, and of his kingdom shall know no hand. When he is ruling, he's not waiting for a time when he will begin to rule. He is ruling because he's born a king. Amen. That's why even his star was already speaking that it's a king that is born. The third gift that Jesus brings through his birth is a gift of possibilities oh i love it it's a gift of possibilities tell your neighbor say a gift of possibilities 
you know we live in a in a world of of, of impossibilities we live in a world where they tell you you can't that we live in a world where they tell you, you can't achieve we live in a world where they say that if you want to do this you can't do it and all the things that they will always try to tell you is that you cannot you cannot you cannot you cannot but the gift of jesus came to tell us that even in the most impossible situation there is hope for you even in the most uncertain situation there's possibility even in the most impossible case there is hope for you that's why in the book of matthew chapter 9 and verse 26 the bible says with men this is impossible but with god all things are i said with god all things are the world will often present as many impossibilities you cannot have this job because you don't have enough experience you cannot have this future because you don't qualify for it you cannot have this marriage because that husband is too look is too good for you you cannot have this job you cannot have this house because you cannot afford it but when you have jesus a world of possibilities has been opened unto you i came to tell you this christmas you got to re be reminded that when people say no it's because they find it impossible for a person such as you to rule it they find it impossible for a person such as you to become a king for a person such as you to rule in the throne but when you got Jesus you gotta tell them never say never because by God with him all things are possible and the Bible says in the book of Proverbs there are three things that astonish me and even four things that amazes me is that when a slave gets to rule it is something that is impossible but it becomes possible when God is on your side how can it be possible when Joseph was taken from the tomb I mean from the from the pit and taken into the house of Potiphar he was lied about and he was thrown into jail and from the jail it could only be death that was waiting for him but the God of possibilities was the God that was able to say to the jail and say jail you won't finish joseph i still got a future for him i came to talk to somebody that 2016 has been a prison for you but i came to tell you after 2016 is finished there is hope for 2017 oh one year might be over but another one is about to open because a world of possibilities is about to open before you is there anything that you are going through that needs divine intervention the doctor say that you can't be cured the doctor say you can't have this and have studied and have been able to bring their pronostic over your life and say you will never make it but this Sunday morning I came to tell you Jesus came in this world so that the impossible can become possible how can it be possible that Lazarus was dead for three days he was smelling already it was evident in everybody's eyes that there was no more hope for Lazarus but Jesus the gift of possibility when he came there he said didn't I tell you if you believe you will see the glory of God am I talking to somebody this morning I don't care what is going on in your life you don't pay for this gift you just got to receive it and when Jesus is standing before your impossibility I want to talk to somebody before the door of impossibility there is a Jesus with possibility before the bill of impossibility there is a Jesus of possibility tell to your neighbor say neighbor this Sunday there is a God who is standing at the door of impossibilities with keys of possibility oh, I came to tell you if they say it will never be possible for you to become what God has meant for you I came to declare let them look again because inside you the one who's in you is greater than your failure is greater than your mistake is greater than the setback is greater than what you've gone through i have possibility and i have faith for my future a son is born i don't pray for it i didn't ask for it but god said i love enough my son not to leave me not to leave him 
die in a world of impossibility I came to tell you how can you be stuck with an impossible situation when you serve a God of possibilities how can you be stuck with an impossible sickness when you serve a God of possibilities how can you be stuck with an impossible financial situation but at the same time the serve a God who has given you the gift of possibilities this Sunday morning I came to remind you all you gotta do is believe all you gotta do is believe I said you gotta do is believe I said all you gotta do is believe there was a woman who was bleeding for 12 years she had spent everything she had in the hands of various doctors and the bible says instead of her situation becoming better it did not come better but it grew worse she spent her money but at the same time she didn't know that there was a free gift that was somewhere for her there are times we spend money for things we could have got for free simply because we are going to the wrong place I came to tell you that the gift is free I said the gift is free you just gotta receive it the Bible said the woman told herself if I can only touch the hem of his garments if I can only go take what is already mine in the hands of my my savior I believe it is possible the doctor said it will never finish they looked at her and said you will never come out of it but she was believing that even in the midst of impossibility there is a Jesus of possibilities and she was going out and when she touched the him the gift was open and all of a sudden the healing that was hers was received and Jesus said Hey, somebody touched me the disciple looked at him and said Master, you must be out of your mind because how can it be possible many people are touching you but I came to tell you there's a gift with your name on it nobody can cast that check apart from you I say nobody can cast that check apart from you there is something that the Lord has written with your name on it and because you wrote it with your name on it you just gotta believe that this is mine if your neighbor will touch him he won't get what is mine if my neighbor will touch him he won't get what is mine I came to tell somebody there's a gift in this house that has your name on it I said there's a gift in this house that has your name on it it was made specially for you made for your family made for your house it cannot fit it's nobody else but you have somebody said possibilities oh glory to God and let me wrap up the last gift that Jesus brings glory to God is a gift of transformation you are never the same when you meet Jesus you are never the same when you meet Jesus Paul was known as the toughest persecutor the first persecutor of the church he was known to be the one that will kill people he was known the one to be the one that will kill people that worshiped but one day he met the gifts the gift of transformation he was on his horse going to Damascus so that he would persecute the church and all of a sudden he was struck by lightning and he fell off his donkey the Bible says and while he was on the floor and there was a man that appeared to him and said soul soul I am Jesus that you are persecuting the man that used to be strong began to tremble why because when you meet this man you are never the same there are people who begin to pretend to be the toughest in life but can I remind you that Jesus is stronger than your strength is stronger than your muscle is stronger than your emotion is stronger than your anger is stronger than anything and all of a sudden when Paul and Saul met Jesus the Bible says he 
left and they told him go into the next city now the people knew paul for his reputation to be a killer but they did not know that paul has made the gifts he has made the gift the gift of transformation and when the man received word that Paul is coming so that you will pray for him, he said, I'm in trouble. How can I pray for such a man? But God said, that, don't do that. Paul is a servant. He is a chosen vessel. How can it be possible with you such background you've had and you'll be able to become what you are? It's because Jesus is the gift of transformation. All of us, you see, don't you used to be what we are today we used to have messes life we used to go to clubs we used to drink we used to party we used to do all kind of things but one day we made the gifts and that gift changed our lives for those that had to hear those that used to have a thirst and a hunger for alcohol and all of a sudden that hunger was turned up to be the hunger of the Holy Ghost their thirst was no longer for beer their thirst was no more for alcohol because when you meet the gift you become transformer is there any man who has met Jesus and his life remained the same is there any man who has met Jesus and his life remained the same even the people like Peter who were ready had anger issue when they met Jesus Jesus told them Peter you are a rock and upon you I will build my church I came to tell you I don't care what kind of issue you are dealing with receive the gifts up I say receive the gifts up the issue will no longer be your problem it will become the problem of the one who was as an assignment to transform your life I know you are praying and say Lord change me transform me but all you gotta do receive the gifts and your life shall never be one day one day Jesus healed somebody and when that man went to the city they could not recognize him there are some of you if you will get done pretending about Jesus you will meet real transformation the problem is Jesus and the relationship with Jesus is different from attending a church service an encounter with God is not sitting under my sound in the building you can come every time to church but that does not mean you've met the gift we present the gift every day but it doesn't mean you've opened the gift until you open the gift transformation will always be a story you hear somebody else tell and i want to encourage you that christmas as much as is about giving as much as is about family there is no future without jesus and you can be here and come to church all your life and miss to go to heaven because you've never received the gift of transformation this Sunday morning I want to challenge you it is not how many times you've come to church it's not even if I have your number or not it's not even if I laid my hand on you or not you got to receive this gift and your life will never be the same say it's over to pretend just say I'm done pretending I'm done I'm done playing church. It is time for me to take the gift that God has given. He did not have two sons. He only had one son. And that precious one, he gave it. The value of something increases by its scarcity. Every time something becomes scarce, it becomes more valuable. If you cannot have an element in a shop, and that people are looking for the higher the demand and the scarcity of the thing will always increase the value the whole world was needing a savior and there was no two saviors it was only one so his value 
could not be numbered. His value cannot be exemplified. His value cannot even be thought through. But yet, God took the very best he had and said, you will have it. It's yours. This Christmas, make up your mind that I won't play church anymore. I won't play church anymore. I want to receive the gift so that in 2017, my life will be transformed. There are people that used to drink more far worse than you're drinking. But today they serve God because they receive the gift. And they open that gift. And today they transform their life. There are people that used to lie, cheat, do all kind of nonsense. But one day they made a decision. I received the gift. The gift is already there. You just got to receive it. And this Sunday, whatever it is that is going on in your life, you have no power to change what is in your life. It is God who has the power to change your weakness. It is God who has the power to turn your morning into dancing. It is God who has the power. Don't try to save yourself. You won't get yourself out of that boat. It is God who can save you out of that boat. And this Sunday morning with every eyes closed, I want you to remind yourself why Jesus came. He came to give us salvation. He came to give us salvation. He came to make a way. He came to give us access. He came to show us possibilities. And He came to transform our lives. Are you here this Sunday morning? You are in need of transformation in your life. 